and welcome to A Lot 360 Analysts and Experts. I'm Michael Schachter, and we are here today to discuss cybersecurity with Jared Carlton, Principal Analyst at Frost & Sullivan, and Ariel Toron, the Director of Cybersecurity Sales at A Lot. So the first question I'd like to ask is, is the home really at risk? Do we have a real problem in home security? We do have a problem in home security today. Um, endpoint anti-malware systems, they only work on certain devices inside of the home, such as computers, for example. Uh, but there's a lot more devices that are being connected to the network today. Um, if you take a look at my home, for example, we have a um, kitchen appliance that's connected to the network. We have, uh, let's see, two smart speakers, two internet radios, um, a smart TV device, um, a printer. The point being, that when you take a look at some of these modern IoT devices that can connect and offer different types of modern functionality for uh, home users, you also have an issue of these devices needing to be patched. And that is not always an easy issue for consumers who aren't necessarily uh, technically adept. They know how to plug something in and get it connected to the network but that's about where their, their uh, technical expertise stops. And so uh, as you have things like malware go out and um, use some of these connected devices to then uh, turn them into um, zombies for use in botnets, for example, that can be used for DDoS attacks or sending spam, um, it becomes problematic for the home user because the internet usage is going up. And if you're in a home where you have um, limited amounts of bandwidth per month, that can be an issue. Um, but it can also be an issue if you have lots of these homes uh, with connected devices that are problematic with being uh, brought into botnets, for example, and, and flooding the network with traffic. So yes, there is a problem a today. Issue. Okay. And are there solutions that already address this? And is any particular vendor kind of dominant in this market space? I wouldn't say that there's any vendor that's dominant. There are different solutions that are being attempted right now. I've seen solutions where um, some vendors have tried to put a firewall inside of the DSL router, for example. I've seen other vendors where they're trying to sell a separate device that goes behind the router, but that the consumers have to purchase and put in their home. Um, and so there are various different techniques that are being tried, but nothing is really out there as um, currently is seen is something that is getting a lot of traction in the market, although there is, a, as I said, a definite need. So there does seem to be an issue and an opportunity and, yes. and a market. Uh, Ariel, um, end users, are, are they going to turn to CSPs for, for a solution when, when they're used to securing their handset or their laptop by themselves? Yeah, so that's a very good question. And I would like to debate that, that statement that they are accustomed to securing their devices using applications. As we see, this is not necessarily the case. So at large, customers are accustomed to downloading applications, their media outlets, social networks, and so on and so forth. But as far as security goes, uh, we see that the average application, the penetration rate, would be in the single digit percentage-wise. So three to 4%, an application that has reached 5% penetration rate um, has done remarkably well. Mm -hmm. And actually, the users look up to their vendors to provide them with security. So uh, absolutely, yes. And I think one of the key things is to provide them with security with as little um, huss and fuss or you know, engagement on their end, which is exactly what Alot provides. So I understand that Alot has this home secure solution. Mm -hmm. What does it give the end user beside this low hassle security protection? Right, so, so beyond, beyond providing a secure, reliable network for the end user, we provide some additional functionalities, and that is via a very user-friendly application. They can access the network remotely and see exactly which devices are connected and active. You can gain view as to what uh, your children are consuming, for example. How much online time 
they're spending on Facebook versus Wikipedia and others. Based on that, you can set their policies. I don't want my children to use or gain access to internet anyway beyond 8 p.m., for example. I want to make sure they have no access to illegal or adult content. So these, as you could look at this as parental controls that we provide. And there's an integrated chatbot that goes beyond security. It analyzes the network as it performs. And if we find any issues with the network, like a computer that is, that is now um, hogging the bandwidth because they are downloading a very large file or an online gaming, then we will, we will alert the user and provide them with proactive means to mitigate that issue. So improving overall user experience while actually reducing support costs to the customer center. These are some very interesting uh, use cases and something that's, that's, that's particularly pertinent, pertinent now because um, it's been in the news recently, I believe it was in the UK, that starting in the summer, um, that adult sites are going to have to start verifying whether people are, are uh, old enough to be accessing these sites. And so that is the model being used in the UK. Other countries may want to put that type of power in the hands of responsible parents. So what you're talking about, uh, having the parents be able to tap into the dashboard, have that type of oversight, figure out, are they spending too much time on Facebook or Twitter? Are they going to that questionable adult website? Exactly. Um, and it, it not only uh, allows you to limit uh, access to certain times, as you'd said, but also in cases of responsible parenting, for example, have those conversations with children about, well, you know, what is it about this site that's interesting to you? Why are you accessing it so often, et cetera? And then also the issue of in a multi-user household of the network, uh, you can't necessarily have someone going and using massive amounts of bandwidth and constraining the use for other people. I have a home office, for example. I don't have children. But if I had children, I know that this is an issue that I would be struggling with. And, you know, during certain times of the day, I need to have really good uh, quality of service in my network because I use BOIP uh, for my communications. So I understand that this solution uh, works by uh, deploying software onto the home router right. and that takes care of the hassles that Jared described of adding Correct. a firewall or some kind of intermediate device, um, can you work with any kind of router? How do, you, how do you address a mass market with so many different kinds of devices? Right. Again, that's a great question. And to begin with, we've designed a solution and, and well, there is a dependency, there is one limitation. And the limitation is the operating system of the particular router that we're going to integrate with. Uh, the benefit is, uh, the limitation is having a Linux operating system in place. And that's the absolute majority of residential routers run Linux, like in 95% and above that. So that kind of renders that limitation into a non-limitation. Mm -hmm. um, in addition, we also um, took into consideration that we have a lot of legacy boxes out there with limited memory capacity and limited processing power. And we've created our solution such that it can dynamically adapt to different um, hardware topologies. So having the ability to work directly with operating systems means that we are really agnostic. We really don't mind which are the changes the manufacturer has implemented on their overlaying software. Mm -hmm. And working with a vast array of um, hardware configurations also kind of opens up the door to practically the, the operator's entire install base. So the solution that we're discussing is called Home Secure. Correct. Um, but would it not also be appropriate for an office CPE kind of well, environment? It, it would, actually. And, and funny enough, the majority of the SMB and, and Soho type of routers are identical to the residential routers, the home router. Uh, they would differ maybe in branding and color, but essentially they are the same. So it will perform in equal measures to the SMB uh, as well as to the home. I think the differences would be marginal. For example, if for the home consumer you would brand um, policy control as, as parental controls, then for the SMB you would brand it as content filtering, for example. Mm -hmm. But to that extent, otherwise it, they will perform identical. I think also for the SMB, one of the important things is they're constrained uh, in this sector with IT resources. Right. Being able to have a device that, that has a dashboard that can identify what's connected to the network is also helping them to secure the network. 
And that tends to be one of the areas where a lot of companies have a blind spot. What's connected to the network? Frequently, they think they know, but they don't. No, correct. Actually, you've, you've tapped upon a very interesting point, and it's kind of a unique value to a lot. And this is going to step up beyond the home security, just to mention that we have a broader offering that also uh, caters to the mobile network. And the majority of the telecommunication companies are converged service type of providers. Mm -hmm. They have both mobile and fixed networks. And the reason is the fact that we can cater to both networks within a homogeneous platform allows them to provide to SMBs a turnkey full managed solution. So for example, Michael, you are the owner of a small law firm with 20 employees, then you don't want to deal with IT, right? That's not your expertise. Uh, you don't want to deal with security that allows the provider to step in and say, hey, we got you covered, right? Here is your, you know, your, your, your broadband and, and router. These are your mobile devices for your employees. And this is the security to go on top of that. I will manage that for you. And, and this is important. Uh, one of the key issues in many organizations today is that they have too many vendors. And mm -hmm. I, I hear quite often that they need to call the number of vendors that they have um, in securing and, and, and managing the network. Um, so they have, uh, to use a common term, one throat to choke. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and this is really important because we have a shortage of information security professionals. Um, and in some places there's a shortage of IT specialists as well. And what organizations really need is an organization that, that is providing infrastructure um, to the CSPs in a way that reduces the workload of the IT staff, of the cybersecurity specialists, but also um, talking about the, the chatbot feature can reduce calls into the contact right. center, which also costs money. Thank you, Jared. Thank you, Ariel. Thank you. That brings this session to an end. Join us next time for the next Allot 360.